Thank you, thank you, thank you, Stageworks. Thank you. I am nothing if not a lady. It's awesome to be here. I'm super excited to be here. Thank you guys for coming out. Uh, hope you've had a great time. Let's give it up for everybody that's performed already. Super solid lineup. Um, so I, uh, I listen to a tremendous amount of hip hop for a girl who's only been high like six times in her life. Um, and it's not that I'm anti-drug. Uh, in fact, I'd probably like to do more of them. It's just that I'm clueless about drugs. Like, to the point that until I was 22, I thought that the bong rips in the back of music tracks were people slurping through straws. Uh, like, damn, Sublime was hella thirsty when they were recording 40 ounces. Shit. Um, but I do love hip-hop music, like, tremendously. Uh, but I tend to prefer conscious hip-hop, and not for the reason that I think a lot of women um, like conscious hip-hop, which is that rap has too much misogyny in it, because I will be the first person to tell you, bitches ain't shit but hoes and tricks. We just aren't, okay? Uh, I prefer conscious hip-hop because I don't need to be reminded about how poor I am. Listening to Chris Brown tell me that he can make in two days what it takes me 10 years to earn? No, thank you. That's why I hate Mitt Romney. Uh, and I'm really, really relieved. I'm so grateful that the election is over and not because I was worried that Obama was gonna lose. I think we had that in the bag. Um, but because I'm so grateful that that barrage of my inbox is done. It was getting out of control. Uh, the emails were coming to me from the president more than they came from Old Navy, which is kind of funny because they were coming for the same reason. Um, that is, I bought a t-shirt from their website four years ago and it hasn't stopped since. Um, at least Old Navy was trying to save me money. The president was always asking for money and these emails sounded like they were written by a friend who just got out of jail and was like desperate for your help. Like, just $65, Ellie, it's all it's gonna take and then everything's gonna be cool. Like, that's a lot of money, Barack. Weren't you the president asking for change? Because that is dollars, son. I don't have that. That's, not, that's why I'm voting for you. Um, but yeah, so I'm grateful that's over. And uh, like Richard said, you know, America wants to believe that now we're in this like beautiful time of post-racial identity and there's no such thing as prejudice anymore, especially here in the Bay Area, right? We all love each other, we all feel good about each other. Um, but we all know that that's bullshit. Uh, and I, I grew up like really believing that I was one of those people free from prejudice, that, that I, I didn't judge people based on superficial values until about a month ago when I was slapped in the face with the fact that I am incredibly prejudiced. Uh, and it's not against uh, people based on their race or their religion or their sexual orientation, uh, I am prejudiced against girls who talk like this <laughs> all the time. Yeah, because this is a real voice that real people have and they use it to communicate with each other. Um, and it's not just hatred, right? Because hatred is like a, a strong dislike, a wish that you didn't exist anymore. And don't worry, I have that too. The prejudice part comes from the actual pre-judging. That as soon as you open your mouth and that voice is what comes out of it, I know you are as dumb as a box of bricks, okay? Um, you could tell me, right, that you are a member of Mensa, and I would be positive that you thought Mensa was a sorority. <laughs> and you can be like, wow, Ellie, that's kind of fucked up. You shouldn't judge people based on the way their voice sounds. Um, and so I'm going to take you on a journey, all right? <laughs> you are going in for life-saving surgery. You're lying down on the table. You're drifting off to that sweet medicated sleep. And above you, you hear... Okay, I'm totally ready. Just give me the scalpel. Let's do this. <laughs> you are waking up and there is no amount of anesthesia that is going to put you back to sleep because that bitch is not cutting you open. It's just not going to happen. All right? Um, and the other reason I hate this group of women is because they make up the largest group of what I refer to as skinny fatties. And if you're not sure what a skinny fatty is, a skinny fatty is a girl who's about 5'8", maybe a hundred pounds, and likes to say things like, oh my God, you guys, I am so fat. I am so fat. I ate three pieces of pizza yesterday, and last week I ate a hamburger. I am so fat. And first of all, Karen, it doesn't count if you throw it up right away afterwards, okay? Second of all, that's not what a real fat person is. <clears throat> a real fat person is a woman who sees a fully wrapped Tootsie Roll on the steps of a middle school. 
Oh, you're going to be proud of me. Walks by it, looks at it, thinks about it, makes the decision not to pick it up, feels very proud of herself for having made that decision, and then immediately regrets that decision for the following 48 hours. <laughs> that Tootsie Roll is my one that got away. Yeah, I miss it. Um, but I, I, you know, I would like to lose weight because I'm carrying a little extra and not to the point where my doctor's like, Allie, we need to do something about this. But enough that like I'm conscious of it. And so I do things like I tell myself, okay, like now's the time you're gonna make the change. You're gonna eat nothing but salad and fruit and you're gonna, you're gonna get in good shape. You're gonna look good. Um, and then inevitably five minutes later, I find myself in the kitchen furious to discover we are out of milk because I just realized that Muddy Buddies would make a fantastic cereal. <laughs> and for those of you not in the know about Muddy Buddies, uh, they are checks covered in chocolate, peanut butter, and powdered sugar. And if you don't think that would make an amazing cereal, then you are dead inside and I can't help you. All right? You're lost, and I'm so sorry for that. Um, but my fitness goals are different than most people's, I think, because most people want to lose a certain amount of weight to fit into a pair of pants or look good in a bathing suit. Uh, but I'm a very anxious person, and I have a lot of irrational fear. And my biggest fear is that somebody will break into my house while I'm taking a shower. And so my fitness goal is that I just want to lose enough weight that when this person breaks in, they will consider sexually assaulting me. Okay? I'm not saying I want to be raped. Nobody wants to be raped. I just want rape to be on the table, okay? Uh, it is pretty inevitable that after a show when I tell that joke, some guy finds it necessary to come up to me and let me know that rape is on the table. So here's the part of the show where I remind you that I am a comic and these are jokes. Don't need to hear about how you'd rape me, we're good, okay? All good with no raping. Um, but uh, my husband and I uh, just celebrated our third wedding anniversary. Thank you. And I appreciate applause. I will never say no to applause, but I will admit I find it weird that people applaud only making it three years into what's supposed to be a lifelong commitment. Concern that our bar's set a little low, America. Um, and a lot of people ask me, you know, we got married kind of young and a lot of people say like, God, Allie, why did you get married so young? We got married when I was 25. And my answer is always the same, which is sometimes you find that special someone and all it takes is one look in their eyes and you know, this is the person I want to spend the rest of my life farting on in my sleep. <laughs> yeah. What I'm saying is my husband's really lucky. Yeah. Um, but we are, we're closing in on 30 and there's been a lot of pressure on us to have kids, but I'm not ready to have kids because uh, I don't know if you guys know this, maybe I'm about to drop some knowledge on you. Uh, when you have an infant, you have to take them out for a walk at least twice a day or they will shit all over your living room. <laughs> and I am a busy lady. I don't have time for that. Uh, and so we always use protection. And my favorite condom is the Trojan Fire and Ice because nothing gets me hotter than feeling like I've smothered Bengay all over my downstairs business. It's so good. It's good. Um, but despite all of our precautions, we did have a pregnancy scare last summer. Uh, I was at a party with a friend of mine and her three-year-old daughter and her kid was like, climbing all over me and at one point her hand ran over my stomach and she looked up at me and she said, uh, is there a baby in your tummy? <laughs> oh, the audible gasp, you understand. And I looked down at her angelic face and I said, no, no, you little shit, I'm just fat. Thank you for pointing that out to everybody here. It's good. Uh, and I left and I moved on. I didn't really think about it, didn't really worry about it, except a couple of weeks passed and I had forgotten when I was supposed to get my period. And so I started to panic. Because I started to think, what if this kid is some sort of baby whisperer? <laughs> what if she was communicating with a life inside of me that I didn't even know existed yet? And so I did the only rational thing, which was I ended up at CVS at midnight on a Saturday night where dreams go to die, <laughs> buying a pregnancy test from a 19-year-old kid who said, good luck. 
as I walked out the door. I went home, I peed all over my hands and a little bit on that stick. I waited three minutes and the good news is, not pregnant, still just fat. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I think it goes without saying that that is good news because if you are buying a pregnancy test from CVS at midnight on a Saturday night, yeah, no business having a child. Right, you're not ready for that. Uh, especially when the only other item you buy is a bottle of white Zinfandel. Yeah. Classy broad. Thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you for laughing. Let's get Tony Sparks back.